Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well and welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something that we haven't yet done on the channel and we're gonna take a look at the resistance of the battery leads, including the connector on the battery pack. So that's going to also mean the solder joint that goes from the wire to the connector. Now I do find this a little bit interesting because what we have always done is we've looked at a battery specifically. This is actually a battery that we did not too long ago. We looked at this specific one and found out that the internal resistance of this pack just absolutely sucks. You know, I know a lot of guys were having good experience with this line of battery, but this one here in my hands, definitely not. And it showed in our performance test. You wanna check that out? That's the last video that we did. I'll leave a link in the description description below. Uh, this battery pack, we're going to go and actually measure the resistance, not directly, but we're going to make a calculation so that we can figure out what is the resistance of the leads. How much of an impact does that make for the entire battery pack itself? Obviously, if we have anything, you know, wire based, we're going to have some form of resistance there. I'm going to break this down into a few different sections where we're going to look at the diagram on how this is going to be wired for us here today. Then I'm going to take a look at a couple different calculations in order to determine how much resistance we have in the theory. Then lastly, we're gonna actually go and look and review the video that we have of taking a value of voltage and then computing some calculations to put something in front of us that represents the actual amount of resistance that we have actually measured and calculated. That's what we're gonna do. Let's jump right into it and head over to the board. Let's go through a few things here on the whiteboard. So I got a few things going on and one of them is this diagram here on the left side. Then we're going to get into a couple calculations that better explain, you know, what we should be able to predict of what happens here today. So within this diagram, we got our battery pack right here front and center and it's drawn quite large so we can see the individual cells and how that would be internally wired together. And then we got our set of main leads that comes out. And on the other side here, we got our balance tab. And both of those are very important because we're going to be needing two multimeters to measure voltage on both sides. So on this side, we're going to have our multimeter directly connected to the connectors that are located right where we see them here. And that's the, and that's the AS150s that we're going to be using today. We're going to be using a charge rate of 10 amps in order to bump that charge rate up to a significant amount so we can measure a difference in voltage. Then what we're going to do is we're also going to connect this multimeter to the taps here. We're going to disconnect the balance tap. Notice how from our charger here on the, on the top left displaying the 10 amp charge rate, we're not going to have the balance leads connected to that. All I did was unplug that balance port. This way we know that there's no charge or discharge current going through to balance out the cells for our charge here. And this way we're going to know that we're going to measure the actual direct voltage as it is right on the battery itself. If there was charge going through there, then this wouldn't work. So just keep that in mind that this is going to be disconnected and won't affect our circuit. Then once we have current running through the battery pack to our charger or charger to the battery pack, we're going to see that 10 amps going into it. We're going to have a voltage drop between here and here. And because we're measuring the voltage essentially here as well as there, we're going to take the difference in voltage, the current that we're applying in order to calculate the resistance of what's going on within our circuit. Now let's go and predict what we expect to happen here. If we do expect something to happen, we're, it's going to be based off of a formula that we're going to assign. So the resistance total is going to equal the total resistance within our wire plus the total resistance in the connectors. Since we're measuring two of those connectors, I ended up applying two to the spec that we get on that connector. The AS150 said 0.2 milliohms. I don't know exactly what they mean by 0.2 per connector, if it's actually an individual or if it's a pairing. Either way, it's not gonna make a huge difference to what we're talking about today. So when we sub those values in, we have to look at the wire resistance. And the wire resistance for 12 gauge at about eight inches times two of those is going to be about 0.002 ohms, depending on the chart that you look at. It's somewhere right around that mark. And we simply add up the two milliohms plus the 0.2 milliohms times two, we get 2.4 milliohms of total resistance within this setup. Now that we have the theoretical model, let's go and take a look at our practical model where we actually take the voltage readings of this battery and then compute the resistance manually. 
Here we're starting off the charge at 10 amps and right away it starts and you can see that it ramps up to 10.01, 9.99, 9.97. So it is fluctuating a little bit as we take this reading. So what I was doing here that you can't see is measuring the current that is actually flowing through the circuit so that when we actually get to the end here in a couple seconds, we're gonna stop the frame and we're gonna jump into the results that we ended up getting. Here are the results on the top left. I show the correction factors and how I got them. I measured the voltage in a few different areas to give ourselves a line of best fit. This gives us a prediction for the correction factor at the voltage that we're going to be measuring at. None of this is 100% perfect. I'm not using the best of you know quality in terms of the multimeters that are out there or the ways that we can measure this, but this is all we got, so this is what we use. Main voltage lead at the very bottom left, we can see that we measured 15.28, and then on the voltage we got 1523. We apply our correction factor and that gives us 1526 versus 1528. And then on the bottom right, we have the voltage delta. That is the difference in volta being 0196 volts. This is because of the current that we're flowing. So we need to measure the current and the current was measured at 9.94. The charger said somewhere around 9.99, 9.98 at the time. So this is what we actually measured. And then when we compute using V equals I, we get an overall resistance of 00197. That's 1.97 milliohms. Very interesting because we did measure or theoretically compute a value that was somewhere between 2 and 2.4 milliohms. This being somewhat close tells us that we're probably in line with what is happening within our overall system. Now looking at this from a conclusion point of view, now that we got the results, we got the predicted value of what we should expect. The leads and the connectors on our battery pack don't really make Make up for that much of a resistance value when we're actually looking at the overall battery packs resistance versus the actual resistance that we have here from the leads. It's not zero, it's definitely something to be considered, but it is something that is only a percentage of the resistance that is accounted for because of the internal resistance of each of those cells. In this particular case, the battery pack was actually over 15 milliohms for the four cells, meaning that this two milliohms is a very small percentage of the overall battery resistance. Obviously this is going to make a more of a difference if you have a battery pack with a lower internal resistance but hopefully what you're doing there or what the battery manufacturer is using is not 12 gauge wire but maybe 10 gauge or even as thick as 8 gauge wire on those battery packs themselves. That pretty well sums it up for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As always like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.